President Mohamed Buhari eases down the lockdown in three states as the country records over 1,300 COVID-19 cases as his request to raise fresh loan of 850 billion naira from the domestic capital market to finance projects in the 2020 budget get an OK from the Senate. This is Plus Politics and I am Benny Ark. In his third televised address since the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, President Mohamed Bari ordered a nationwide curfew from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. beginning from the 4th of April to cut the spread of COVID-19 in the country. He also approved a phase and gradual easing of the lockdown in the FCT, Lagos and Ogun State, but however, extended the lockdown to May 4 when nationwide curfew would take effect. He said he took the decision in line with recommendations from the Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19, the various federal government committees that have reviewed socioeconomic matters, and the Nigerian Governors Forum. And joining us to have a conversation on dates is a political analyst, Melumi Olajegbensi, via telephone and also via Skype, it's economist, Gbolaho Lujede. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining me on Plus Politics. Uh, good to be here with you. Yeah, yeah Melumi, how are you doing? I'm being very fine. Good evening. I'm being too. I'm all right. And thank you for joining me. Thank you. Let, let's kick off the show this way tonight. Now, do you think the president's nationwide address last night on COVID-19 did offer decisive solutions to protect Nigerians from the deadly pandemic? If no, what would you say those concerns are? Yeah, well, um, by my own um, observation, I think the president's address was fair was fair because it was not too good and it was not too bad. Uh, the president was able to address certain issues that are critical to the Nigerian people. But of course, the president also failed to address some things that are also key to the people. So I think for me, the Nigerian people should be, I mean, should be sympathetic of the president's situation. Uh, a clear observation of the president's human architecture goes to show that we have a president who is uh, sick, who is not fine, who is afraid, who is tired, and who does not have grasp of situation of what's going on in the country. I mean, that's just my simple opinion. Belahan, and for you, Belahan, what do you feel about the president's address yesterday? I think I think it was a fantastic address. Um, it touched practically on. Everything, literally everything that people wanted to hear about. We wanted to know about lockdown. He spoke about lockdown. We wanted to know about what is being done about the frontline fighters, the health workers. He touched on it. We wanted to know about um, the, the security agencies, about things like palliatives, a whole lot of things. He even gave us the data, the updated data of, um, of, of the COVID situation. Then he had a build up as to how he arrived at the eventual decisions that were made, the consultations, the governor's forum, the uh, presidential task force. He, he had a build-up. Then, then he led into the specific decisions. Then at the end of those specific decisions, he gave a proviso which allowed the governors of those specific, of the, of, of the various uh, uh, states to say what I've spoken are guidelines. So you guys should take it further. That is a recognition of the fact that a man sitting in Abuja cannot know as much as a man who is sitting with his people in those states. So that is why I think that uh, um, a statement, that speech in itself, was a fantastic job. Well, the, the president did say How that. we now take it further is a different thing. Okay. Well, the president did say that based on the recommendations of the presidential tax force on COVID-19, the various federal government committees that have reviewed socioeconomic matters and the Nigerian Governors Forum, he approved for a phase and gradual easing of the lockdown measures. But just last week, Friday, the DG of the NCDC, Chike Iekweazu, said due to the increasing number of cases in the country, exiting the lockdown phase would take a while and isn't advisable. Now, wasn't this a factor to consider, too? It was a factor. You see, we are at a junction where nobody in the, in, no current leader in the world, in the entire world, has been before. Nobody has been in this situation before. So it is tough. There is no easy decision with COVID. It had to balance 
the request from the uh, uh, the governors. The request from the governors was not because of the governors. It was request coming from people who are also talking to these governors. He had to balance it with some other agitations from several stakeholders and then arrive at a decision to gradually ease, us in, ease out the, 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 the lockdown. Look at it this way. The lockdown in Lagos, I'm sure, I'm, 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 I, I know you are aware that there are already protests in Lagos. Did you see the image of the place where there was a fire somewhere in Ikeja, in the Ogba side yesterday? There was a fire, there was a tanker fire there. It was horrendous. Literally the entire region, the entire area, trooped out onto the road, ignoring totally anything called social distancing to come and see fire. What is special about fire? That people had to come from several streets out to come and watch. Yeah, At the yes, free zone yes, yesterday, there was a riot. Well, I do, I do understand your concerns and why the, the lockdown had to be eased up. But here is the NCDC. I mean, those in charge of basically the pandemic is control, its treatment, saying exiting the, the, the lockdown, the, the lockdown wouldn't be advisable. Were, were there not, don't you think there were other measures the president would have considered and put in place than the, the planned phase easing of the lockdown, which takes effect from the 4th of May? Because we shouldn't forget, uh, we, still, we, still, we still have the concern of community spread. They are the concerns of the community spread. There is no doubt about it. Like I said, there are no easy decisions when it comes to COVID matters. So what I think is going to happen is that each of the governors in their domain will take these issues further. For example, in Lagos, I am concerned about transportation. So if we unlock the, the economy in Lagos and people can move around, how will the, trans the public transporters deal with that? Will they still be carrying the kind of people they carry? Will Okada be carrying people, considering the fact that you cannot even have social distancing in, in Okada? How about the Kekemarwa and all those? So those are the nitty-gritty that I think we need to work out. Okay. And then take a peek. The, the, the truth is that the, the lockdown is already failing. Why are we failing to ignore? Why are we ignoring that fact? If people are already getting on the road and making massive protests in, in the free trade zone yesterday in Lagos, we either plan our way into easing the lockdown or the lockdown will crash in on us. That is the reality. Okay. All right. Pelumi, President Buari gave assurances yeah. of adequate test kits with the disposition of the National Center for Disease Control which actually did declare that they were having issues of their testing capacity. Now, that, there seems to be a dichotomy in, in those two statements. H how do we get to, you know, bri bridge these two statements together? The NCDC say, you know, they, they're having shortages of test kits and other medical equipment. But in the president's address yesterday, he did actually say, you know what, that uh, there were, there were su sufficient test kits currently. Yo, know, frankly, when we find ourselves in a situation like this, the doctrine of a corporate governance is such that we have to hold the person with the head of government responsible. My concern is that President Buhari has, uh, is confronted with it. Um, he has a choice before him is a very difficult one. He has a choice to choose between the health of the Nigerian people and, of course, the health of the economy. However, you understand with me that only the elder person can engage in trade. Now, the question about the um, issue of test kits and all of that goes to show the level of preparation that the government is making to ensure that this COVID-19 is combated. Now, we must come to the realization that we are actually fighting a war. And it is not just about a disease, it's not just about a virus. It requires a clear focus and sense of direction from the path of government to ensure that all of these things are addressed. So when we begin to have issues that are quite inconsistent from the path of government, it raises issues of concern. And let me quickly say this. My colleague from the other end there, I do not know the level or the degree of his attention when Mr. President gave his address. But you agree with me, apparently, that um, the government display inability to implement economic relief packages for the people. And that is why the government has to quickly call off the lockdown. Because the government has understand that the lockdown is resulting into digital fortune and the revenue generation of the country and, of course, the survival of the people. No nation can actually um, declare a lockdown when there are no alternative for people to survive and for the continuation of the country. And now let me tell you, Fantastic. the country right now is trading on a very difficult path. 
Because if we call off the lockdown and we allow other economic activities to continue, there is no way we'll be able to ensure the principle of social distancing to regulate or to reduce the level of complication of this disease. If you allow churches and mosques, if you allow students to return to school, then we all are out for a very serious danger ahead. So I think um, the government needs to talk to ourselves very well and need to strategize very well. My concern is this. If you watch very carefully the address of Mr. President, and you take um, a careful look at the president's human architecture and fiscal architecture, you will discover that you have a dummy who is declared, who's addressing the people who does not understand, who does not have the full grasp of the situation of the country. And I think that they need for us to do something to clear about that. All right, gentlemen, let, let's consider one of the highlights of, of the new nationwide measures by the president, which will be an overnight curfew from the hours of 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. Now, this means all movement are and will be prohibited during this period except essential services. Doesn't this undermine the fight against the infection and community spread of the virus, like I did ask and Bola on earlier? Belumi. Yeah, you said what? Now, the president, in one of the vital things he, he said about the measures in place for the new, um, the new, facing down the new lockdown, there will be a nationwide overnight coffee from the hours of 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. And this simply yeah. means that all movements are and will be prohibited during this period except essential services. Doesn't this in yeah. any way undermine the fight against COVID-19 and the spread of the virus still? Well, I think that declaration is uh, simply dramatic because if what we are trying to do is to reduce the level of communication of COVID-19, I do not think declaring curfew at night will actually do anything. But necessarily, I think those uh, that will be moving at night are people who are actually engaging in some social activity and that the government is trying to stop. But if this government really wants to fight COVID-19, there are basic things that must be resolved. And when you listen to um, NME, you will discover that the federal government has refused to engage such a vital organization in supplying ideas and vision for the government, and I mean to support the country in addressing the problem. So I think seriously, that um, government should stop thinking alone. Government should annex the idea and its ideas and opinion of all stakeholders who have vital ideas to bring on table to ensure that this issue is addressed. We cannot fight COVID-19 by making uh, all sorts of declarations. We cannot fight COVID-19 by declaring that people should not move from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. in the morning. If people are not moving, I mean, you tell people not to move, you declare a lockdown, and you tell people to move at some particular hours, it's not going to stop the communication. What's important right now is that government must increase its ability to do testing across board. I think seriously that there's a need for government to break its structure and, uh, the, and I mean, to change its structure of testing. Let us take the testing down to local government, whereby in every local government, the state or the local government can take absolute charge of whatever is going on in the entire fight of COVID-19. So by the time we are doing enough testing and we are following people who have uh, one week or the other with people who have been tested positive, then we'll be able to uh, bend the curve so quickly and we we'll know what we are doing exactly. All right. And also, I think sincerely, if government should engage all the necessary stakeholders, by now government should have provided funding for organizations or individuals who are interested in engaging in research. Engaging in research to develop a uh, less vaccine or a drug towards addressing this problem. So we have a government in position who is waiting for China, the United States, or waiting for other countries to come up with vaccines or to come up with solutions. And we actually annex the opportunities we have in this country. All right, Pelumi, Pelumi, I'll need to interject. I'll need to interject you now, Pelumi. I want I want Bolahon. I want Bolahon to react to some of the few things you've said. Um, Bolahon, is there anything you want to react to based on what Pelumi just said? Uh, there, there are a few things, oh, definitely. Yes. Um, we have the issue of the coffee, which is a very important part. Yeah. And it's not just the coffee. There are a few things in that speech that will require specific tweaking by the government that is closer to the people. Um, when you say coffee uh, from 6.30 or is it 8 to 6.30, uh, 8 one may walk in Guso, yeah. may not walk in Lagos. So... You, you, you see a situation in which even if I leave my office at 4 p.m. 
on, on the island in Lagos. I may need to take down three, four hours sometimes to get to, depending on where I live. Right? If I live in one of those very far away places, I may still be in traffic by the time that coffee will kick in. So for a place like Lagos, the governor will now take it from that guideline position and dissect it further to arrive at what will work for Lagos State. That, that is how, how to deal with the uh, coffee matter. The same thing will go for all the other uh, uh, states in Nigeria. Uh, what was the other thing that was uh, mentioned there? I, th I think he also spoke about um, the issue of uh, testing kits having finished and all that stuff. About two weeks ago, the problem was uh, reagent in certain places. Then uh, three days ago, we heard about the fact that there are no testing kits. Yes. Testing kits on availability is actually not a Nigerian problem. It's actually a world crisis. It's all over the whole place. But at the same time, I don't think we're doing enough to find alternative solutions. We have been told that the polymerase uh, analysis uh, pathway uh, is the most reliable. You know, you do a genomic breakdown of this uh, virus to determine exactly that this is COVID-2. And that is the one that is 100% reliable, and that's what we have been doing in Nigeria. But there are a few other innovations that are coming into that space, uh, which we are not looking at because we believe they are not reliable. But I think that by this time, I expect a CDC in one of its laboratories to have people whose work is to start taking each and every of these innovations and see which one can work. Let me give you a very good example. South Korea. South Korea did not uh, wait for a WHO-approved way of testing. No. He commissioned his, science, his own scientists when this matter came up. And they came up with some testing kits. As at the time, at the peak of the problem in South Korea, they were doing up to 15,000 tests a day. 15,000. We have not even done 15,000 since February 27. All right. Now, so, well, well, quickly. Yes, yeah, sorry. I need to interject to you here because we're running out of time on this segment. Mr. Governor Babajide Saolu has advised the working population in the state to take advantage of working from home, even as the partial lockdown of the state begins Monday, May 4, 2020. Now, that doesn't come up as a, a mixed signal and messages, going by what the president said yesterday and what Mr. Governor is saying. Mr. Governor is the owner, is the, is the one with the primary responsibility, and it can vary. The, the president was very specific that these are guidelines. Okay. So, someone will now need to take it from where the president stopped and then devolve it around to specific as it affects legal state. So, if, in fact, if he doesn't, if he want, if he doesn't even want uh, uh, us to still be going out, he can say we shouldn't go out. He will discuss it with the president, and they will agree and say, okay, Lagos, you remain where you are. As a matter of fact, the, 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 the very uh, nature of gradually easing us into that space, it's not for everybody to hit the roads on Monday. And I hope we can work out the integrity of this. As many people as can work from their home, she will still be in their homes working from their homes. All right, Balaam, uh, before we wrap up this segment, now, you, you just said the president's address yesterday was pretty fantastic. Now, businesses of the private sector have been crippled by the lockdown. You and I, it's, it's a given. And they're now faced with it the burden is. of worker salaries and business refinancing. The president's address did not necessarily offer any post-lockdown stimulus to assist Nigerians in the private sector. Now, was this an oversight? I don't think it was an oversight. Okay. I believe some things are, <clears throat> are in the works. There was the 100 billion for healthcare, for example, which I've been spoken about. There was a 500, another 500 billion, also in that discussion space. There is a, there was a 850 billion that was approved today. So it appears to finance the budget in the world. 850 billion but to finance to the budget. Yes. Yeah, it's project. But yes. you see, when, when you talk about project, it means that the, those are things that will stimulate government spending. All right. When government you, you, you know, you know, you know, where does Yes, Bola Hall. On the next segment, which is pretty much economical, we're going to bother more on this, and then we'll, I'll, I'll take okay. your thoughts on that. So let me, let me have Pelumi um, give us his final thoughts on, on these issues, and then we'll, we'll wrap up this segment. Pelumi, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Yes, please. I, I, I need your final, your final thoughts, your round of thoughts on all of this, please, and what you would recommend yeah, at I, this point in time. I mean, I mean, in summary, my brother, I believe we are on the threshold of discovering just how inadequate and unprepared we are as a nation 
to do with the threat as an existing stressor as one well imposed by the COVID-19 virus. In a sense, the virus is a bell-sounding alarm, but it's also an abdicate for the media and the... I so there's a need for us as a nation to rise up collectively and save ourselves from this menu. Listen to my brother over there mentioning billions of naira's are put here and there. And I begin to wonder if our government is a native doctor. I have not seen any billion anywhere, and I know Nigerians are complaining all over the place. There has been a lot of reports of billions of naira approved for economic relief for this and that. But some of these things survive in the press and in reality. And that is why government need to bring leadership down to the people and ensure that leadership is for the people. You will agree with me today that what Mr. President has just done in the last address is simply because the palliative structures have failed. They engage contractors, but no one can see anything. They engage a lot of people, and a minister claimed that they distributed billions of naira directly to Nigerians, and the people are still complaining every day. I think what we need to do as a nation is to learn our lessons now and ensure that when any other opportunity comes, that we can let leaders who have their net wealth put on their shoulders, who can speak clearly with a sense of direction and with focus. Public interest lawyer Akbalumi Olajek Bensi, thank you very much for your contribution and for joining us on Plus Politics. Thank you. And thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now, and when we return, another loan request from the president, another approval. Stay with us.